thing. These are things. Listen, we'll give it our lives for things, not for God. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? We are actually giving our lives for things, not for God. Things are consuming us. And what it has done, it has got, gotten us off track. It's a distraction. It's not from God. It's from the enemy. You're now tuned into the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown, equipping and empowering God's people as instruments of righteousness, where your freedom in Christ makes the difference in your life. Now for today's message. A night of impartation. The Grace Factor with Pastor Kevin Brown. But the blood of Christ speaks of what? Justification, redemption, reconciliation. This is the message that you're supposed to be persuaded by. Sunday, January 24th, 2016. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. Service starts 6 p.m. With national recording artist Canton Jones. Kingdom Vision Christian Center, 1945 Beesbury Road, Charleston, South Carolina, or visit kdchristiancenter.com. Talking about the inner war. Is it the flesh or is it the devil? Listen to me. Raise your hand if you want to keep the Satan out of your affairs, out of your life. I guess everybody would raise their hand to that, right? Okay, put your hand down. Raise your hand if you want to keep Satan out of your marriage. Okay, that's for those who are married. And if you get married, you want to keep Satan out. Raise your hand. Okay, well, I'm going to teach you some things this morning to keep Satan out of your marriage. Okay? Now listen to me. Satan <laughs> is a real foe. Jesus says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Did you, you, you hear that? Yeah. Jesus said that. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven or fall from his place or his position. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? He is a real foe. He is a foe, listen to me, that has been dethroned by Jesus Christ himself. He's been whipped. He is under your feet. He no longer has rulership, authority, or dominion over a believer. You understand what I'm saying? Listen to what I'm saying real good. However, you must understand that his realm, his realm of opportunity, uh, his realm of deception is in the realm of the flesh. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear me? So Jesus... The Lord is speaking through the man of God, Paul. Instructing us as to how to keep Satan out of your affairs, out of your lives. Just because you are born again and you belong to the Lord, it doesn't mean <laughs> that you can't get into the flesh. It doesn't mean that you can't give Satan access into your life. That's right, that's right. That's Some of us, we think we are um, <laughs> immune to Satan's devices. It's true, but then again, it's not true. 
It's true as long as you walk in the spirit. But it's not true if you walk in the flesh. See? The spirit, Jesus, Paul says, walk in the spirit. Walk in the what? He says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the what? Flesh, or what he is saying, the old man. Right? Remember the term old man? The term old man refers to your old nature, your sin nature. The old you. Say the old me. Some of you are still the old me. You hadn't picked up the new me yet. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? You really don't... you're really the same person because you hadn't picked up the new me yet. Even though you're supposed to be born again, you hadn't picked up the new me yet. In other words, Paul says, taking off and putting on. Now that you are born again, say, I'm born again. again. I am born again. I'm born of God. So I got to take this off. See that right there? I am born again, so I have to take off malice. I have to take off hatred. Did you hear what I'm saying? In other words, the Lord is not going to do that for you. Did you hear what I said? You have to do what? You have to take it off. Who has to take it off? Right, the Lord is not going to take it off you. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you fast. How much you speak in tongues. You still have to take it off. Amen. You have to take off jealousy. Glory. You have to take off unforgiveness. Let me tell you something. This thing is plaguing the church. Unforgiveness. You have to take off unforgiveness. Stop telling yourself unforgiveness is a part of you. (laughs) We have convinced ourselves to believing that these things of the old nature of the old man is a part of you. Now, we just read, what we just read yet? Did we read anything yet? I meant meant to read um, Romans 7, right? Look at Romans 7, and look at verse 20. When you get Romans 7, say amen. Amen. Look at verse... Verse 18. You got verse 18? Look what Paul says here. For I know that in me, that is, in my... Now he's not talking about his members. He's not talking about his physical body. This term here, when he uses the words flesh, he's talking about the old man. Or the sin nature. The godless nature. Human nature. You understand what I'm saying? The old you. Say the old me. The old me. Now look what he says here. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. No good thing in the flesh. For to will, it says, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, what? I find not. In other words, as long as long as I choose to walk in the flesh, nothing good can come out of it. Nothing good. Listen to me good now. I don't care how good it feels. The end result will not be good. See, some of us, we like to hold on to jealousy. We want to hold on to unforgiveness. We want to talk about what people have done to me. What, what that person did. You're the one in bondage. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. And you don't even realize it. You don't, you don't realize that when you hold on to unforgiveness, which is the work of the flesh, yes. it creates, it opens, up, it opens up a door to sickness. Yes. Yes. You, give, you give the enemy access into your life because you refuse to take it off. Now, God is not going to make you take it off. Neither is God responsible for you getting sick. Come on now. Neither is God responsible for you being oppressed or depressed as a result of your refusal to let it go.
there's nothing good in the flesh. Paul said, listen, Paul, <laughs> Paul being a Christian is coming into this knowledge, coming into this revelation, coming into this truth that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Because the law, the only thing the law had to work with was the sin nature. The old man. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So listen to me. He says now, because you are now born again, that means you must reckon yourself to be what? Yeah. Dead. Now, what part of you is he talking about? The old, the old man. man. So the old man is supposed to be dead. You see what I'm saying? Now, that, has to, that, that only takes place by faith. You must believe that when he died, your old man died. The Bible calls it the body of sin. It's person, sin is personified as a person. It's the body of what? Sin. That body... That person, that body is now in the grave. That old nature, that old man is in the grave. That's where he's supposed to be. So that, listen to me, so that you can live a blameless life before the Lord. You can live a holy life before the Lord. Listen to this. You can live a victorious life. You can live a, a life that's dominated by the Spirit of God. But with the old man in the picture, listen to me, with the old, with the old man in the picture, there's a war. Yeah. That's why husband and wives can't get along. Yeah. That's why husband and wife need a whole lot of counseling. I ain't getting no amens in here. Yeah. That's why husband not talking to wife, wife is not talking to husband. Do you hear what I'm saying? The flesh. We go to bed angry. And the Bible tells us, be angry and sin not. Let not, this, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You ever heard that scripture before? And then, you know, you come to the man of God and get some counsel. You hear the word. The same word you hear on the pulpit. You ain't <laughs> there's no different word. It, it, there's no different word in counseling than it is on the pulpit. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. You ain't going to hear nothing different. You're going to hear the same word. But most of the time, we want other people to hear our point. This is my point. Well, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same resolution. That's right. It's going to be. Uh, it, it, you're going to hear the same truth. That's right. You see what I'm saying? That's right. Most of the time, if we can just crucify this flesh, we won't really have a problem. Amen. The reason why we can't, the reason why we don't walk in love, is because of your flesh. The reason why we don't walk in love toward one another is because of the flesh. We are being dominated by our own flesh. And once that happens, you allow Satan to come in. Yeah, that's right. You know Satan will talk faster than God, you know that? He talks twice as fast as God. He talks more often. And we love to listen to him. We love to listen to the devil and our flesh. Your flesh, let me tell you something. Your flesh will speak to you like a natural born man. Look at him. Watch him. Watch him now. Go into his phone. Go into her phone. That's not the Lord telling you to do that. Check his phone out. Check her phone out. That's not the Lord. That's your flesh. And then you go and check the phone and you find something that you, you find something that you're not supposed to find. Now you're ready to fight. And then we want to talk about the Lord. The Lord led me to do that. 
the Lord led me to go into your phone. No, that wasn't the Lord. If that was the Lord, you wouldn't have handled it that way. So you ready to fight, you ready to leave, you ready to walk away. You mad now. You sleeping, in the you, you sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> it's quiet in here. Okay, look, look, look at the next verse. Um, verse 19. For, look what Paul says. Paul says, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that what? This old nature. Now Paul is referring to the old nature and the law. Trying to serve God by observing the Mosaic law. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When, when you're trying to, when you're, when you're trying to um, gain recognition, when you're trying to gain righteousness by keeping a law, the sin nature will dominate you. The old man will dominate you. What we have to do as believers is reckon ourselves to be dead already and alive under God. So when you became alive under God, you became his righteousness. Amen. Say, I am, I am the, righteousness the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. Now, when are you the righteous of God? Right when are you the righteous of God? Right now. Right now. Say, I am, I am the, righteousness the righteousness of God, of God. Right, now. right now. Okay, so if that is the case, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man, beware, in beware. In Give me a piece. Can I hold your paper right there, darling? Okay. This is me. This is who I am. Right? Where am I? This, this is Christ. This is the word of God. The Bible said, and the word was made what? Flesh. Okay, so this is the written word. Okay, where am I? I'm in Christ. I am one with him. Just like you are one with him. Do you understand what I'm saying? See yourself as one with him. Now, what I'm talking about right now, it has to be a faith move. You have to believe this thing with all your heart that I am one with him. Do you believe it? Now, listen to me. Once you believe it, listen to me. Once you believe it, he tells you, now take off anger. A night of impartation, the grace factor with Pastor Kevin Brown. But the blood of Christ speaks of what? Justification, redemption, reconciliation. This is the message that you're supposed to be persuaded by. Sunday, January 24th, 2016. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. Service starts 6 p.m. With national recording artist Canton Jones. <laughs> Kingdom Vision Christian Center, 1945 Beesbury Road, Charleston, South Carolina, or visit kbchristiancenter.com. Go to, um, go, to, uh, go to Colossians. I just like the book of Colossians. Go to Colossians chapter 3. Go to Colossians 3. There you go. Go to Colossians 3 right now. This is how we keep Satan out of our lives, from wrecking our marriages. Because, see, if you give him an inch, he'll take a yard. You give him a, you give him a rope, he becomes a cowboy. I'm telling you. <laughs> yes, Lord. Look, 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 look at um, Colossians chapter 3. You got Colossians 3? Okay. This, man, this is good. Let's start from the beginning. He says... If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Listen, are you risen with him? Notice what he asks you. He asks you, are you risen with him? Raise your hand if you are risen with Christ. So that in order to be risen, you got to be dead. I said in order to be risen, 
You must be dead. Who must be dead? The old man. The old man, the sin nature, human nature, old nature, is buried. And when he raised you, he raised you to be a new creature. Am I right? Amen. So you're no longer the same. Amen. Say, I am not the same. I am, not the same. I, am I am a new creature. I am a new creature. In, Jesus In Jesus Christ. So if that is true, if you truly believe that, say, do you believe that, saints? Do y'all really believe that? Amen. Okay, I'm, all right, all right, we're going to see. We will see. Look what it says here. Set your affections where? On things, On things above. Yes. So we're not supposed to be consumed by this world. Amen. Now, this world will distract you. Yes. The things of this world, this system, will throw you off because He's telling you, put your mind, put your attitude, put your mind on me. Things above. Yes. Things of the kingdom. Say things of the kingdom. Things of the kingdom. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first. I'm talking up in here. Seek ye what? First. The what? The kingdom. the kingdom of God. Yes. And his what? Righteousness. He says, in all of these things will be added. See, the, the system of the world is the opposite. The system of the world seeks things. And they seek things. And they seek things. And they seek things. And they are consumed by things. Before they know it, they are old and gray. Life has passed them by. They have, they have done nothing. For God. They don't even know God because they've been so distracted by things. Yes. Now, if you don't be careful, Come on now. you'll be just like them. Yes. God is not that important to y'all. You things of the world, this system is more important to you. What kind of house I'm living in and what kind of car I'm going to drive. And see, all those things are more important than putting God first. He says, if you put me first, if you seek the kingdom of God first. He said, I'll add those things to you. Your life will become as a magnet. See, if I'm running, listen to me. If I'm running after God, God said things will run me down. <laughs> he, said, he said, if you seek me first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, all these things that the Gentiles seek after will be added. I will add those things to your life. You don't have to, listen, he says, you don't have to seek for no house. I'll give you a house. <laughs> you know I said? You have to work two jobs to get a car. I'll bless you with a car. <laughs> Jesus, why are you wor Jesus, why are you worrying about raiment? Why are you worrying about clothes? Why are you worrying about food? This is, this, is what he, this is what the Lord is trying. Let's put things in perspective. He's not, saying, he's not saying that these things should not be on your mind. It should be a concern of yours. But what he is saying, we overreact. We overindulge. As if God don't know what you need. Or what you want. So much so that we put God on the back burner. That's the problem. That is the problem. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's almost like, you know, like I, I remember back years ago I got a new car. I got my first new car, right? I don't care what was going on. Car brand new. I'm cleaning the car. Car already clean. <laughs> I drive the car down the block. I come back. I got to wash the car again. <laughs> I'm washing the car so much. I'm spending so much time with the car. I ain't thinking about prayer. I ain't thinking about studying no word. You understand what I'm saying? I was over consumed with the, with the thing. So much so, it, it became a distraction. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? If you got to buy a house and work two jobs and can't come to church, can't serve God, you need to sell that house. I'm going to say that one more time. You don't like to hear that. If you're living in a house or driving a car where you have to work two jobs to pay for it, and it keeps you out of the house of God, it keeps you from studying the word, it keeps you from praying, that is not a blessing. That is not a blessing. I, um, I'm good. I know a, a, a man of God down in um, one of Dr. Dollar's spiritual sons. And he told us, you know, he's a, big, he's a pastor down in um, Florida now. And he said, man, he said, in order for my, you know, we was in the ministry, doing good in the ministry. He said, but we had, um, we had a house and everything. And there's some things we needed to do for God. He said, we had to take a, he said, we had to take a step back. Before we can go forward. He said we had to get rid of the house. We sold the house. So that we can position ourselves. To do what God wanted us to do. See what I'm saying? These are things. Listen. We are giving our lives. For things. Not for God. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? We are actually giving our lives. For things, not for God. Things are consuming us. And what it has done, it has got, gotten us off track. It's a distraction. It's not from God. It's from the enemy. Then you find yourself becoming carnal. Fleshly. Because your mind and your heart is not set on things above. It's set on things on the earth. Now, are you listening to what I'm saying? God wants You have just heard from the world of Kingdom Vision Christian Center with Pastor Kevin Brown, located at 1945 Beast Ferry Road in Charleston. You can also visit us at www.kvchristiancenter.com and like us on Facebook. Remember, your freedom in Christ makes the difference in life. A night of impartation, the grace factor with Pastor Kevin Brown. But the blood of Christ speaks of what? Justification, redemption, reconciliation. This is the message that you're supposed to be persuaded by. Sunday, January 24th, 2016. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. Service starts 6 p.m. With national recording artist Canton Jones. Kingdom Vision Christian Center, 1945 Beesbury Road, Charleston, South Carolina. Or visit kbchristiancenter.com.